Today, I'm going to be giving you guys a very easy and simple dish that you can make at home if you want to impress your family and friends. We're going to be making some pan-seared salmon with some mashed potatoes and a beurre blanc sauce. This is a very delicious and easy recipe that you can do at home. And I will also give you a few ideas if you want to say change the sauce or something else as well, maybe something a little easier, a little later on in the video. So the first thing that we're going to be making are the mashed potatoes since they're going to take the longest. Now on what type of potato that you should use for mash are any good starchy potatoes. So that would be russet potatoes, Yukon Gold, or even canny backs, which is a hybrid, it's also good for frying, but any starchy potato. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to peel the potatoes. If you're doing more than say 500 grams, or about more than a pound, then I would say to do this in the sink as it's much easier to clean everything. And once you have the potatoes peeled, if you see any bruises or anything like this, take them off. You don't want any bruises or eyes on the potato, you just want a clean little potato. I'm gonna cut them in half, lengthways, I'm gonna cut them again, and then I'm gonna cut them into segments, small little segments. They should be more or less all the same size so they cook evenly. I'm gonna put them into a pot and I'm going to fill this up with cold water first, and then we're going to put this on the fire and bring this up to the boil. While this is coming up to the boil, I'm also gonna take another little pan and put some heavy cream, and my heavy cream here is super heavy, as you can tell, so I have to add a little bit of uh, whole milk to this just to thin it out a little bit. And I'm also going to allow this to come up to a simmer. We want hot cream when we mix our mashed potatoes. And while the potatoes are cooking, we're going to start cutting our butter. I'm gonna cut the butter into small cubes. We're gonna use not only for the mashed potatoes, but also for the sauce a little later on. Once the potatoes come up to a boil, we're gonna add some salt. If you have salt malden, that's fantastic. If not, a normal table salt will do. And then the moment that you can take a knife and it goes cleanly through the potato, is finished. Once it's finished, we're gonna remove it from the heat and we're going to pour this into a chinois since it's less than say 500 grams, it's not that much. And we're going to allow the potatoes to rest. You want the rest of the residual water to evaporate from the potatoes. So just leave these for about two to three minutes. And then after several minutes, after they start to cool down, I'm going to reuse the same pot. I'm gonna clean it out and I'm going to put the potatoes back in along with some cubes of butter and a little bit of the hot cream that we have. I'm gonna mix this up with a whisk and I'm gonna taste to see if it needs a little more salt or maybe a little more cream, a little more butter. And that's it. A very easy way on making some delicious mashed potatoes at home. Now we're going to work on the salmon. This is the salmon that I have from the fish that I filleted not that long ago. Um, if you would like to see that video, then I have it on my channel. But since this was frozen and after you defrost it, be sure to either defrost it the night before in the fridge or under some cold running water. And then once it's defrosted, we want to pat this dry. It's very important to have dry fish or a dry filet when making any crispy salmon skin. And I'm also going to score the skin to add to the crispiness and it will also help the fish cook a little faster. And if, by the way, you do want to say add some thyme or some herbs as well, you can put the herbs in these little slits to increase the flavor of the fish. And that's it. We're going to get a saute pan on the heat we're going to pour a little oil in it, get the pan hot. And to cook the fish, we're going to cook skin side down first. I'm going to lay the tail side, or the, um, the thinnest piece, away from me. And you always want to lay the fish in the pan away from you. Since there's oil in the pan, it will spit, and you don't want to burn yourself. Once you put it in the pan, it's important to put a little bit of pressure on the middle part of the filet, either with your hands or a spatula because the skin, once it has contact with the pan, will start to contract. It's best just to put a little bit of pressure there for a few seconds, about 10, 20 seconds. Let that cook on low to medium heat. But when cooking fish is super easy because unlike steak, you can actually tell from the outside of how done the fish is. You can tell right here by the line or the doneness is starting to slowly cook a little further and further up the fish, as you see. It'll cook a little faster if you put a lid on the pan. And once it's about two thirds of the way done, we're going to flip it. And I'm just going to cook for the remainder a minute or two on the other side. Now, once the fish is done, we're going to remove that from the heat. I like my salmon more medium. And now we're going to work on the sauce. So for the sauce, I'm going to julienne a few shallots. 
it'll be easier to remove these later on. And then we're going to open up a bottle of wine and we have our vinegar and our butter is already ready. I'm going to get a little saucepan. I'm going to put the shallots in. I'm going to measure the amount of vinegar and then I'm going to pour the, well, about double the amount of wine, of white wine into the pan. I will have the full recipe down below if you want to make your own Berbalonk sauce. And if you would like another sauce variation, then I would say to do like a Beurre Noisette, which goes very well with fish as well, which is just butter, lemon, and capers. That's another very easy sauce, which I will leave a link down below if you want to check another video out with that sauce. Now we're going to put this on high heat and continuously cook the shallots until the wine and the vinegar are reduced to a significant amount more or less for the amount that we're making today, about two tablespoons more or less. Once it's reduced enough, I'm going to take the sauce off the heat, pass it through a chinois into a fresh saucepan. I'm going to return that to the heat and then I'm slowly going to add a couple cubes of butter while whisking. I'm going to continuously add the butter one by one and then I'm going to turn this off the heat and slowly work this off the heat. You want to allow the butter to amalgamate by itself. This is an emulsification and it can be quite tricky to be honest to make a Be Blanc. And this sauce is one of the sauces that you have to make and have to serve immediately. If you let this sauce cool, it will thicken. And when I mean thicken, it will be a solid block of butter because it's a butter sauce. And if you try to return this to the heat, it will split on you. So a little trick, if you're having a little bit of a problem on say emulsifying it with the butter slowly, is to add a little bit, not a lot, but to add a little bit of heavy cream to this. This is just a little trick if you're having a little bit of trouble, keep, trouble keeping this from splitting. But in any case, you have to keep whisking, adding the butter in again and again and again until you have added all the butter for the recipe. And that's it, you have an easy and ready to make Beurre Blanc sauce. Now for the plating. I like to put my sauce on the plate first, then I like to put my mashed potatoes in the center of the plate and then put the salmon on top of the mashed potatoes to give it a little bit of height. This is any time in a lot of the nicer restaurants. You always want height with the dish or you have nicer plates as well, but you always want to have like a focal point for the food. I'm gonna add a little more sauce to the top of the fish because I love Beurre Blanc sauce with my salmon. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of arugula as well to give this a little bit of color. And there guys, you have a very easy and delicious dinner for any guests or friends or family that you come over, you can easily impress them with making when making this. I hope you enjoyed this easy and delicious recipe guys. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to ask me down below. And more importantly, be sure to subscribe, like the video and share this video with others as it helps my channel greatly. So until next week, I'll see you guys again very soon. Take care.